Well, all right. Welcome. Very small group this week, but welcome to the Jenkins UX SIG meeting um, for June 24th, 2020. Uh, we had a good number of topics to cover here today. Um, I know Tim is pretty, pretty vital to the first item on the list, so maybe I can jump over to the design deck to get us started, Felix. Does that work? No, we can mention the other stuff after. Okay. Um, so let's just do that real quickly. I won't put this full screen. Everyone here has seen this before or this content up here before. Um, so we'll just jump into the new stuff. Uh, so we have a work in progress new color palette resource. We had five categories of color palettes is how we've been thinking about the, the color strategy as we build a long-term system, right? Uh, one that was suggested or requested a couple weeks back more, more than a couple of weeks back, actually, I've been wanting to do this for a while, was to have a data visualization specific palette. Uh, now, this is very much a work in progress, but uh, very straightforward. Essentially, this is a palette for data visualization uh, UI needs. Um, so this is going to be something that, uh, once it's done, is very helpful for creating consistent visualizations for plugin authors uh, throughout the community. But uh, it is, again, a work in progress. Part of the, the idea here is that we would have a, a set of primary swatches and primary is a misleading label, so I'll change that. But primary swatches that can be used in representing uh, multiple data sources. Uh, and then we have brightness variations so that uh, if you need to represent different data points from one source, uh, you would use, in this case, uh, different variations of brightness. Now, really complex data visualizations can make use of combinations um, to represent more in-depth data. Uh, this is, again, really uh, still a work in progress. I think this, what we see on screen, does not really meet the needs of Jenkins UI data visualizations yet. It might for some plugins, but not for all. Um, so we'll get there. And especially with, uh, with our smaller group today, I'm going to post this in Gitter after the call and, and try and get some feedback there. But any thoughts or questions on that one? Cool. All right, so we're gonna take a look at uh, some table and tab styles. Uh, these are UI styles, of course, they're um, a very small uh, portion of, of what's actually been done to refactor tables in the UI. This is just what people see, hey Tim. This is just what people would see when they're clicking in the UI, but there's a lot of more important, frankly, structural work happening. And I'll let uh, Felix and Tim speak to that in just a second. Uh, so the intent here is, of course, updating the table styles in the UI with a more modern aesthetic. So that should result in a more user-friendly experience and show people that we're investing in Jenkins, the Jenkins project UI, while we also uh, work on more fundamental improvements. So some things to highlight here, taller rows, greater visual contrast with the new palettes that we previously defined, not the data viz palette, but the others that we've looked at in recent weeks, adjusting cell padding. And of course, we'll have the new type styles, new colors, new hyperlinks, things. This is an example of a piece of a bit of UI where a lot of these different base styles really come together uh, for a big improvement. Uh, also, let me just, through here. Also part of the idea here is sort of starting to define the anatomy for tables in the UI and, and for tabs in the UI. How do we um, think about them? How do they work? What are their limitations? And of course, this involves a lot of uh, iteration between myself and Felix going and seeing what the actual technical constraints are of these pieces right now. Um, but this is a cert. And we have interactive states that follow the same treatments as other elements that we've been working on, like the sidebar, uh, for greater consistency throughout the UI. Yeah, one question. Um, are you talking about existing tabs or introducing new tabs? Talking um, about um, my... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, so basically, uh, we are talking about updating uh, the tab bar widget in Jelly, the mm -hmm. tab bar Jelly widget. Um, I'm aware there are, well, now that WADEX here, there are uh, plugins that write their own tabs, like, for example, the new script security plugin update has their own tabs, so that would not be affected. We will stay the base tabs provided, widget provided by Jenkins Core. Okay. 
basically. That's what we will do. And we will be very conservative with the markup changes in this case. Very conservative. Mm -hmm. And tables, we are going to tackle, again, the big table class, basically. Uh, more technical implementation, more technical details, the big table with within pain frames for those for plugin developers. So those are the two things we will touch. Nothing else. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for the design of the header to be left aligned. That's so nice. <laughs> yeah, I try to I try to make the to be able to right align columns. For example, for numeric columns, to be able to right align them, but it's it's quite di it's a bit difficult to align also the header of those columns. I, I couldn't manage to do it properly. I will try though. All right. Uh, if we don't have any more thoughts or comments on this for now, we'll switch back uh, to our agenda. And uh, Tim, uh, Felix, and Oleg, do you want to speak to your tables to do status? Yeah. Team, we talked to you here in this talking point. I'm, not, I'm sure you know this. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I wanted to bring two weeks after yet again the merge uh, to discuss the merge state, the status of the of this PR and talk to see if we can set a or we can decide or maybe consider what would a reasonable so uh, sort of a deadline for it to be merged. Uh, before the next LPS, for example, what, um, a date where we think it's sensible that if it's after, it, it, may, it may jeopardize uh, other plugins or the September release. So right now, the, P, the set, status of the PR. The PR is blocked. Is uh, right now has a block uh, a blocking problem that causes pl uh, some plugins, some plugins that uh, need to be adapted, but they are not if they are not adapted they they break configuration layout i may be able to dedicate um two two days this one day this week one two two days next week to see if i can unlock it um for now uh but right now this is a this is a blocker many of us consider it a blocker but um also some of us believe that if this is solved it could be merged after a few days of intensive testing so um, my question is uh, that this is the context. That said, imagine we, what would be the, I would like to hear your opinions of when it would be too late to have it merge, assuming we fix all of uh, what I just mentioned before it's too late to, sorry, when it would be too late to merge it in time for the LTS release. Not technically, but no, I know it can be made into the release even if it's March mid July to the end of July. But what would be sensible to do? Uh, can you, Tim? Um, we are very interested. I would like to hear your opinion very much because you are the main person driving this one. Um, well, when's the next LTS? Huh? Sorry. So when is when is when is the next LTS version selected? 20 something of yeah, July. 27th, if I recall correctly. Just a second, I'm opening uh, the calendar, but yeah, it should be oh, last week of uh, July. Uh, it's the 29th of July, and the plus two more it doesn't fit. Yeah, so 27th is basically everything is merged to master so that we get it theoretically at least so this is just a cut off date uh, not sure if it and lts is released in what september or so yeah it will be at least in six weeks after the redecision so be the current process I mean, even if it does make it into the LTS, then it's still got it, six weeks should be time to fix plugins or any improvements we can find in the core to backpack what compatibility. Um, is the aim to get it in before the LTS or or not? 
Um, Because ideally, it's like we get it in as soon as it's ready. Um, but I don't think it matters too much either way. Either it makes it or, or it doesn't. And if it makes it, then we may have some improvements to make when issues are detected. Um, yeah, my, my, my main question is, for example, I I don't know if I would suggest making it, merging it if uh, by the end of July, even if it technically is possible, technically we would have six weeks to do it. I would be up for merging it this week or maybe the, the, the next. I, because, well, I, for, for me, it's better for peace of mind. I don't know if, so I, I, that's what I want, that's why I wanted to bring this up. Yeah, I mean, the, long, the longer we have, the better, for sure. Um, yeah. So yeah, still as far as I know, the only to... issue is that table issue. But the problem is that it's the browser that's mm -hmm. changing the DOM. Which, um, it's not easily fixable. Yeah. So basically, so... we have for one blocking feature and uh, the decent risk then even if uh, it's fixed uh, there will be plugins which are not fully compatible right um yeah it depends on because if we need to do more testing with popular plugins i i haven't had any issues um Possibly, I could create a forked image and run it with our full, with my full set and see. Um, but definitely, the default plugins don't have any issues. Um, yeah, I can uh, probably stop instance which would cover something like three or four hundred plugins. So it's my uh, biggest uh, in terms of number of plugins uh, testing setup. I've ever had. Um, I may need to update the plugins, but the problem that I cannot commit uh, to do it uh, this week and next week. Week after, maybe. And yeah, the problem that yeah, you still need to, to manually click a lot, of, a lot of things because it's not something like opening configuration page and seeing whether everything something breaks. It may break on uh, drop downs, on drop downs of drop downs. Yeah, not even mention uh, things like Melex plugin and whatever, which seem to have infinite drop downs. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. And so it will need uh, some careful testing. At the same time, yeah, ship it in weekly. Uh, but yeah. So in the worst case, we have an option to revert that. And that is submit the pull request. Mm. Yeah, if we find something critical, we can always revert it, or possibly. Mm -hmm. It's not the easy. I was going to say exclude it from the LTS one, but it's probably very, it's very invasive in the styles. Yeah, that's the problem. I think this is a PR that's not easily revertible, uh, because it will, at least in the in the JavaScript and CSS part it will basically uh, make it impossible to, or very, very difficult to roll anything back after it. So one thing that we could do possibly even this week would be to see if we can mainline the JavaScript and the CSS, at least the JavaScript changes. Um, I think the JavaScript changes should be safe, most should be safe to mainline as they have to be compatible in both ways anyway. Yeah. Um, and the CSS, Probably not mainlineable, but possibly some of it is mainlineable. Yeah, maybe uh, if we are willing to handle a bad merge conflict, we can extract the form CSS and isolate it. It shouldn't be a merge conflict if we just pack it out. Um, no, I mean doing it in master and then <laughs> merging it into the into the form branch. Yeah, oh, I'll see if I can. It's probably, I'll see if I, I can, hopefully this week, um, just see if I can pull some changes out just to make it smaller. Because yeah. it's the jelly changes that would be, need to be reverted and that's reasonably yeah. straightforward. 
Um, but the CSS changes may be a bit more intricate as well. Okay, so my um, I have a suggestion to make, if it's okay for everybody. If we make it, if we are able to unlock the 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 PR, uh, so solve this breaking this blo this blocker. This week, maybe we can consider safely merging it, right? Right now, and if we are not able to unlock it in the next one two weeks, maybe we we have this we reevaluate reevaluate in the next SIG meeting, maybe. Yep. Yeah. So we're at then. Um, so the next topic, did you say that there's app errors on table to div? Sorry, I think can you speak a bit louder, please? Uh, if there's updates 3B tables to divs app errors? Uh, ah, see, yeah. ATH errors. Ah yes, I I run the that's something that I would also wanted to mention. Maybe it, it's relevant. I've run the I was able to run um, the ATH suit and uh, the PCTs against this branch um, with the clubbies, and uh, we found that, for example, right now there is I think around ten breaking PCT errors, uh, sorry, 10 bro broken PCT tests that are broken just because of this branch, or the, or sorry, that are breaking this branch but not in, uh, in, in other. Also, the, there are around 20 ATH failures that do the same, and the total amount of affected plugins may be around 15 at breaking tests, maybe. I will report all of them in 10 to 15. I will report all of them tomorrow in the the breaking tests in the to the to the epic. Keep in mind these these are breaking tests that appear on these branches that do not appear on mm -hmm. other branches. They don't necessarily mean that they are breaking because of this, okay? So we may need to examine them. Uh, we have clouds will examine most of them. Um, but yeah, it could, just, it could be just markup changes as well. I had to I had to fix one of the smoke test errors. Um, yeah, because it was doing a strict equals on the class rather than checking if the class was there. Yeah, uh, exactly. So many tests are brittle, and yeah. and uh, well, it's good that you're failing because we can fix them anyway, even if the branch is merged, even if it's not merged. Uh, better tests are, are always welcome. So I will be also be reporting everything I, I can. I will also be working on doing code search, uh, doing code search for possible errors, for example, looking for a specific uh, overridden widgets. For example, uh, there are several widget uh, plugins. I have reported those today, by the way. There are several plugins that rewrite widgets for example, the Kubernetes plugin, the HTML browser plugin. There are, uh, and they, I will also be searching for HTML, um, sorry, for occurrences of table markup, especially the infamous case that causes layout breaking issues. Uh, I will be searching on the code across the whole Jenkins AI organization. I will focus mostly on the most relevant and used plugins, of course, and I will try to report everything I find. It will not be perfect, but Hopefully, we will stuff will appear. Okay. Cool. And hopefully, that will that will inform us better what the scope for the actual conf and um, breaking break break edges. All right. Uh, we can skip IMC. We looked at that. And item D here is I just kind of wanted to mention this uh, to the group and see what people thought. Um, so we've established a lot of uh, base styles in the UI uh, and we've looked at them together in previous SIG sessions. Um, and I think some of these things are getting to a level of maturity where I would personally, I would feel comfortable sharing them on Jenkins.io as design guidelines for plugin authors 
uh, for anyone who may be interested in understanding the language that we're trying to build uh, in Jenkins. Um, so I just uh, thought to myself, well, I went and looked around at the IA of the site. Uh, it makes sense it would be under documentation. And the idea here is not to do a huge release uh, or anything like that or a huge publish. It would just be to start with basics and we would contribute to those gradually when we feel that a certain element is stable enough or secure enough or is represented inside of Jenkins and release. Um, and then we gradually grow those. So does anyone have any thoughts on that? Good idea, bad idea, anything like that? Neutral is fine too. I think it's a good idea to, especially to show stuff like palettes, uh, type mm -hmm. scale, uh, icon recommendations. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Uh, stuff that it is actually technical, like for example, if we go into detail, like button styles or button variants, those are more difficult because the better example is done using the native widgets provided by CSS classes instead of having people trying to replicate those. Yes, but agreed. The, the, the abstracts, as I like to call them, the abstracts, definitely. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Yeah, there's two sides to it. There's the actual code that's needed, which I think really belongs in Jenkins in a, um, you're in a development plugin sort of thing, which shows you how to develop views. I know there's UI samples, but I don't think splitting it out is the best because it needs it needs to be linked to the Jenkins core, um, and it also means that you don't you don't update UI samples when you update Jenkins. Um, yeah, so in my opinion, like, it needs to be brought into Jenkins core back. <laughs> yeah, I think it used to be in Jenkins core. It was probably moved out, but I think it needs to move back to. But there's also a problem there that plugin developers don't use the latest Jenkins core, so they're not going to get the latest guidelines and tools. But I guess what they do get is they do get guidance tailored to their version of core. Um, so things like the jelly tags that you need for icons and actually using them and showing that they work and having the code next to it and CSS classes for alerts. Yeah, hmm. yeah. That, that one was painful on um, trying to help Arnold with it a few days ago and just having to dig back through Git history to find when CSS stuff was added and it was completely undocumented. Um, I'd love for us to be able to provide all of that, as you say, inside of Jenkins and on the website, right? Mm -hmm. I don't see why it couldn't live, as long as it's maintained equally in two places for visibility. To start, this would just be yeah. really low level stuff, yeah. you know? Guidelines. Uh, but I love that idea. And ideally minimizing people having to do PRs to Jenkins core and the IO if we can. Because, the, and, and then there's problems like you're going to have to track when it's introduced in core and um, so like what, when the CSS class was added and um, those sort of issues. Yeah, one thing uh, to help with this is uh, to create new UI samples and to document minimum version uh, right inside UI samples. I agree. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to start with that. At least we, we could wait, right? We could wait until it's more useful and more in depth and not just some basic color guidelines and type type uh, structure and then publish something more thorough. That's totally fine. Yeah. Um, I, and what I would like to, to, to say in that sense, I would love if people, if there would, if there's in ci.jenkins.io if, for example, I like to the site to be integrated into Jenkins. That's what we already mentioned because of the, its coupling with Jelly Markup. If anybody could go into ci.jenkins.io and go, go somewhere within the public CI environment, and that's running LTS, I, I, right? Mm -hmm. and, and check what the proper markup is for that LTS, what the proper widgets are for that LTS. That would be amazing. If not, they can always Download the Jenkins, uh, pop up a uh, development version of Jenkins and be it on Jenkins Core, install the proper version of Jenkins Core, install the proper version of the plugin and have the proper samples. So that, that that's what I would like to do, to say. Online docs on ci.jenkins.io. Yeah, it should be, you should be able to install the UI samples plugin there. Yeah. Um, it's just not really maintained. 
Yeah. And you know, so I, maybe I guess, I guess it was separated so that anyone could add stuff to it more easily, but then no one maintains it. So I one of the arguments I saw that it was too invasive invasive in the sense that you put uh an entry on the main sidebar. I would just hide it with a flag and um, or maybe put it as a footer entry, as a footer with a footer decorator. I don't know. Yeah, just have an environment variable or a feature flag or something for us, and then put it in the sidebar if it. So it never end up in a production instance unless you're specifically enabling it, and then in, in the development plugins just automatically enable it. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, so maybe the next first step is to update, uh, let's say, update the UI samples plugin, set examples for I don't know. Try to do it after um, after the September version. Sorry, mm -hmm. so the September LTS because we will have better stuff to show, right? Better uh, how to uh, indications, how to have buttons, how to have tables, how to have the, the two variations, oh, okay. hyperlinks. Yeah, I can say I don't think if they will make it, but <laughs> yeah, so we'll have more stuff and then uh, we will try to keep to be updating and if that's successful, we can try to look uh, to look into m making it back into the Jenkins mainline. Yeah, because another issue is worth that is that it's no one installs it. It's not it's not a new development instance. When you spin up your plugin, you don't have it. I didn't even know about it for a long time. Yeah. I only knew about it because somebody brought it up in a SIG meeting. Yeah. Months right. months ago. Yeah. Well, it's something okay. fixable. We could uh, update maybe an HPI plugin to include UI samples plugin by default when you start in development mode. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, that could, yeah. There's probably two options. One is just moving it to core and the other is and then having maybe an HPI enabling it, or the other one is maybe an HPI automatically including it. I believe it was done at some point. Uh, I'm not sure why it changed. Or maybe it was actually embedded. Uh, no, it was embedded into the Jenkins core, and it was uh, being enabled by Jenkins based on conditions. Yeah. So instead of that, we could uh, do it with maybe an HPI plugin. The problem with matching HPI is you need to is you need to match its Jenkins baseline version. I would have thought so. It's probably not the easiest of doing the Maven HPI plugin to which version of the plugin you install, which is why it makes sense in Core. I think I don't. Maybe we can go back and find out why it was moved, or maybe we can just propose moving it back. I guess it was a detachment uh, within uh, Jenkins to the zero. Because yeah. before the total plugins were bundled into the work file and you had more flexibility with regards to that. So my preference would be to do it in maybe an HPA plugin. There's obvious consequences so that if you develop a plugin in Groovy, then you won't get it. And uh, second consequence so that yeah, you have to run in the development mode. Well, why would you not have it in core? Oh, uh, well, we just stopped uh, bundling plugins. They don't have it as a plugin, just have it as part of core. Why not? Why, yeah. So technically it would uh, simplify things a lot, uh, especially since we could uh, require whomever contributes new UI, new control to create a demo within the same pull request. Yeah. Uh, so it would be an improvement for- And they, can, and they can use that to demonstrate their component as well. Yeah. So even if it's something for a plugin, they can demonstrate it in core. Yeah, also we could uh, modify taglib documentation for JD controls because they could point to a demo. Yeah. So if somebody moves that, I think it would be quite a good improvement. Yeah. Just, and let me just check how many changes have been done to it. Uh, UI. Or maybe we can just, instead of moving it, we can start it from scratch. Yeah. If it's less complicated, because if I recall correctly, um, mm -hmm. there are some good uh, useful stuff on the UI samples plugin. 
nothing that can be replicated and it needs to modi be modified anyway. It needs to show, um, for example, sample uh, jelly markup next to the actual. Right now, it's, it only shows what the widget looks like, a living version of a widget, for example, a progress bar, right? But it doesn't show the use of the progress bar in Jelly. So the samples that are right now are good, but maybe it's better to just rewrite it from scratch and to start them back again, if it's less complicated. Well, it works best if someone wants to rewrite it. Um, yep. So it really depends. Uh, UI samples is a bit obs uh, outdated on its own. Well, yeah. it's not obsolete. Again, um, it looks like it gets like one or two updates every three years. It, it's it's basically barely been touched since it was split. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did run it a few like before the UXX hackathon, and everything in there seems good and useful, um, mm -hmm. and good that it was if it was maintained better and it more more available to everyone. Yeah, so um, moving to, to, to Jenkins code, uh, anyway, you have to implement an engine which would uh, inject uh, UI samples. So one of the ways is to just have UI samples plug in as a sub model, because why not? So basically a sub model within the Jenkins repository, yeah. I mean Jenkins code repository. So it's basically copy a paste of plugin and the replacing uh, parent form pointer. And uh, after that, uh, yeah, you need to apply some magic in a word runner to uh, inject uh, this plugin as a dependency. So it could be done. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Hi, Mark. So yeah, I okay. All, I was gonna say you all took my idea of starting to list them on the site and made it much more advanced, which is a good thing in this case. Um, as far as next steps, uh, you know, what do you think, Felix or or Oleg or Tim? Um, we have uh, several ideas here, and I've been kind of taking notes for my own sake here, but. What do you all think as far as moving forward and deciding how we want to think about documenting all of this? I think the uh, right now the <laughs> UI samples one. I think it's summer. No, every uh, we uh, we have bigger uh, bigger fires to work uh, to focus on, especially the form tables to divs. <laughs> it's going to take more. It's summer. We are low in development work, maybe. Um, and, and, and we will be short, probably short in community contributions. So I, I'd say, just go ahead with what your plan was. Create pull requests against uh, maybe uh, documentations part with the abstracts, with the base colors. Typography is not that important, I think. But the color, the color palette is the most important one, I think. Uh, do that against the plugin documentation as what your plan was and. We will follow where, whenever we were able to. Yeah, just add the stuff that people need. Um, typography kind of just comes. You can document it so that people know it, but it's... Yeah, for example, right now, Uri Hafner is... Uh, well, he, he wasn't able to come today, I think. Um, he need, He has mentioned before, he needs those colors. He needs that palette in order to work on the visualization plugins. So there's no no reason for uh, to make him wait um, and other visualization plugin authors and other people interested in using the new color palette oh, sounds good all right um i'll follow up in our next succession with some progress on that but i don't expect that to be you know very complicated or anything like that um since we're starting so simple with just colors um Cool. Does anyone have anything else for today's session? I can do a quick demo of the JUnit plugin using eCharts. Um, oh, great. Are you already finished with it? Cool. Uh, I got it working, yeah. It's, it needs some cleanup, but um, it works. It took a bit of time. Um, yeah. Oh, that looks amazing. It it no longer it it no longer has the fixed width of five hundred pixels, right? It's it's a SVG, I think. Canvas. It's a canvas. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. 500 pixels. I hate it. Okay. But yeah, it looks great actually. It looks really good. Yeah. And we can always hit the uh, expand button or full screen button. Uh, we already have some uh, graphs, etc., which support that. Basically, just uh, um, pop up which uh, shows a full graph. Mm. Yeah, yeah. There, is, there is one the existing one. I haven't added it to this, and I wasn't sure if we needed it. Um, no, I, I like this a lot more as you can just hover over it and understand it. I struggled with the other one. Um, and can, can you can you go to a, can you go to a build if you click on it? Uh, yeah, you can. Uh... Because, for example, that's what I do basically. <laughs> I just click on. Uh... Yeah, so that took it to that one. And maybe we can add a pop up. Uh, I'm sure the HR uh, um, each allows you to write a pop up or something. No, it, it's linking. Okay. Um, yeah, that's great. Um, you mentioned something that the, you changed the side of visualization. It's no longer stacked. It's more of a relative. Uh, so the main, but well, there's two, there's two, so one change I've in, got in here currently and I was looking for input was it's currently showing past rather than total. So previously there was two, two um, um, axes. There was failed and total. Um, yeah. And this is showing past and failed with no total. Um, I wasn't really sure what made the most sense. So this is what it showed previously. So it was total eight tests with three failures. Um, and it doesn't and it doesn't overlay them. Whereas this one overlays a little bit. And I need to I need to add skip on there just to see what it looks like when it's got a skip one. Mm. So, so if I'm correct here it it it's sorry Olive. It, it's easy to see what uh, it it's it, it's it's easy to to appreciate what the actual proportion between total past tests and failing tests are, right? Yeah, yeah. So Tim, you changed it from a stacked bar to a to just a bar. Is that what it is? I, I'm not because if the number of passed drops below the number of failed won't, on this current layout, won't the blue line become invisible? Um, it will hide behind the red, won't it? Possibly, yeah. Um, possibly, um, you'd still be able to see it here. Um, but then wouldn't you get the same um, with the other one? You just get um, you get a big failed blob to the back here. If the failed was higher than blue, wouldn't blue would disappear as well then? So, so if, there were, if, there, with... if there were eight tests and eight tests failed, this would just be read at the top. But if seven tests failed and one passed, yeah, you would see in this one, old uh, presentation, there would be a one a one wide bar at the top, and yeah. Okay, all right. I I, sure. I don't have an especially strong opinion, but I I like I like it being a stack in the old, just because it would show me the to, the top of the of the bar was was the num the sum of all tests, right? So I could infer the number of tests running just by reading, by looking at the. Yeah, I can have a play with that and see what it looks like. So that would change it from, it just didn't quite sound right to me to show total and failed. Um, mm. it's like, well, right, it yeah. doesn't need to be total and failed. It can be total and stacked on the, 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 but you will end up seeing the total. I, I think what Mark said, for me, it has been useful in the past to see what the actual de delta of test coverage is. Uh, as as uh, it increase basically over time, uh, of how, how see the the higher the varies, the, the higher your coverage gets, it's easier to appreciate something that I found useful in the past. Yeah. Yeah, that that is beautiful though, Tim. Thank you. That is, and and yeah. this is using e charts instead of the old the old code. J free charts is what most of oh. the other charts use. <laughs> hasn't been up, hasn't had a release in three years. 
Well, that's a fresh dependency in this in the Jenkins project. <laughs> Uh, well, it comes from early, um, all the earliest work on um, uh, um, forensics and um, warnings NG. Yeah. Yeah, warnings NG is almost as much as popular as GUnit plugin. So I don't think that it will be putting uh, additional dependency everywhere. Okay. Yeah, and, and getting more things to look like warnings NG sounds like the right approach to me. <laughs> I, I really when like it's well, feel. Yeah. So the main, so the inspiration for doing this was um, was dark theme really. Because if I look at if I look at the, so on my production instance, um, this is probably what looks the worst right now, is um, the JUnit plugin. Um, as it's on every build page and it just looks horrible. Um, yeah. This doesn't look great on dark theme yet, but. It just needs to change to the eCharts plugin to change the colors a little bit. Yeah. Um, One question. Uh, what about theme support there? Uh, in order to support, uh, for example, a dark theme in JUnit plugin, will we need to add any changes on the JUnit plugin side? Or no, it's, it's all on the eCharts plugin side. Okay. So eCharts already integrates all of the changes for the controls. Yeah, so, so there is... So basically, mm -hmm. there's a whole API for using it that really is designed. Um, mm -hmm. um, all of this sort of stuff. And then there's a, I think it might be in the, I think it's, oh, here it is. So it's this, cheat, it's this trend chart. Um, you can go custom and go nuts if you want to. Um, but this pulls everything in into an, um, we call it the adjunct things, uh, not here. Mm -hmm. We wrap JS uh, trend chart. Um, so there's some configuration done here, which needs to be made more generic for, um, well, it needs to be made themable in some way. Um, so we'll be forking the we'll be forking the the library basically. No, so this is this is just JavaScript calling the eCharts API. Ah, okay. So this is plugging. So this is plugin JavaScript, this is not library JavaScript. This is a Jenkins API plugin. So we just need to just need to make that okay. theme work properly. Um, but okay. we don't so JUnit plugin doesn't touch any JavaScript. JUnit plugin just uses the jelly tag. And when the when the plug when the e charts plugin is updated, JUnit plugin will just keep the theming automatically. Okay, I'm pretty sure you can you can read the values of a CSS variable on through JavaScript. Yeah, I think you can uh, too. I just haven't looked at it. Um, and you can always fall back to, yeah. Yeah, so this is the, this is the line that needs changing. Um, that's where it looks a bit off at the moment, but it looks much better than before. The other side of that is there's a few widgets in core which use J3 chart and what do we do there? I thought the standard answer to that was burn them with fire, but I, I, that's probably the wrong approach, right? So yes. I don't know what they are. Oh, oh, this one, load statistics, okay. Yeah, I think this one is a J3 chart, as far as I know. Um, there's also, I think, system info, I think. So load statistics is using e charts? Uh, so these are using J3 chart, so at some point, we need to do something about these as they're not themable. I got a, I got a flood of issues reported by Daniel in the weekend, um, which is half of them with the, half of them with J free charts. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what the fix is. Um, we can fix plugins first, um, but whether we bring e charts into the core, or whether we detach these charts out to plugins and then and then do it. I'm sure if anyone has any opinions. To, to be honest, I think this not need not only a library update, but maybe a, 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 a re, uh, actual, I don't know, UX improvement, US redesign, because for example, if I look at this, what is this showing? I can guess RAM usage, usually plan, but for example, the other one, the, the load and the load statistics chart, it, for me, it's difficult to interpret. Maybe I'm not used to it. Uh, 
so maybe maybe the pro maybe it's nice to change the the um, the charts the chart library but i think maybe we need to look into the chart itself well this chart uh, common yeah, recommendation is to block this page entirely hmm? uh, because uh, these charts uh, on a real instance it takes a lot of time to load them and uh, ideally, if you talk about these charts, uh, I would rather prefer to redesign how we uh, build them. So maybe incremental data update, uh, maybe uh, a shorter time frame by default and ability to zoom out, etc. But uh, as this, uh, this uh, load statistics is not usable on a real instance where you need the load statistics. Yeah, and so maybe each, each art does load it asynchronously, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's a nice time to maybe it's something that we can ask in the mailing is maybe good to consider moving it into a plugin. It would be useful, especially since uh, this visualization doesn't require APIs. I mean, yeah, it can be moved even without uh, marking the thing as a detached plugin. We can um, add some magic, for example, keep uh, the URL in Jenkins core, uh, add an extension point so that uh, whomever uh, goes to this page, they can uh, go to statistics plugin, um, to the listing of statistics plugin, not only the slow statistics, we have uh, useful plugins like cloud stats, which could be embedded into the same interface theoretically. Uh, so, yeah, I'm plus 100 for moving it out. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any useful charts in Jenkins Core, or well, great charts in Jenkins Core currently. They may be useful, but they're not great. Yeah, and if it's moved into a plugin, it's easier to adopt it, each chart. Yeah, um, yeah, if it moves maybe. into a plugin, then it's trivial to do the each chart thing. Yeah, I cannot imagine. So if we are able to keep uh, Jenkins Core lightweight, I mean, still keep fancy UI there, but without uh, depending too much on JavaScript libraries, uh, it would be a good advantage. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can... yeah, this is not like, this may not be more a platform feature. Like, for example, if, com if config as code is out, why is this thing? So yeah. it's a less platform thing. Maybe. Yeah, we already need to think how what we do with recommended plugins, whether we want uh, to ship Jenkins with some plugins bundled again. Because, for example, if you ask me whether I would like uh, to ship uh, plugins like uh, cloud stats uh, or configuration as code out of, the, out of the box, yes, I would. Uh, but uh, it's a completely separate topic, and here we can uh, keep detaching things. Yeah. Yeah, I think, let me just have a quick look. I think it's just the two chart, um, plus uh, in core anyway. I know there's a few others. Yeah. Yeah, so I think, yeah, there's, not, there's only those two charts that I know of. So it looks like uh, your GitHub extension already works with the new interface. Yeah, it always works. Do you mean they, you know, they find GitHub or whatever, this one here? Yeah. Yeah, it didn't break. I was surprised it just kept working. Yeah. I, thought, I thought it would break. <laughs> Although the, um, they did not test this with, with wide monitors though. So that's completely off center and all. It's very strange. Somehow it doesn't bother me very much, but I think the tabs they click most of the releases tab. Yeah. So if yeah. you speak for you about user experience, one thing which concerns me that uh, with the new UI, though with old as well, if you have a big number of uh, uh, files, um, uh, then uh, you have to scroll uh, down to get to read me. So it's probably something I would like to see changed in the repositories. But yeah, 
it's definitely unrelated to Jenkins. The only thing I'm struggling with is this button here. I'm so used to commits being over here, and I keep getting lost with that one. It took me a while to get adjusted to go to file because I use go to file uh, pretty much every day. Uh, I, I, I always use the keyboard shortcut for that one. T. Aren't, aren't you all embarrassed at the amount of muscle memory that you have just disclosed that you have? <laughs> the commits button, the go to file. Oh, the muscle memory among software de developers is frightening. I, 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 was there any way other than pressing T to do it? Uh, I think there might have been a menu hidden somewhere. I'm not sure. But yeah, yeah. I always use I didn't, I didn't know. But I, I use this all the time since someone showed me it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, by the way, I'm finally finishing the your UX Hackfest for user interface uh, blog post. I mean, the, so I will uh, hint a dark theme and uh, many other stories there. Uh, also, we have an online meetup tomorrow where, again, we will bring up some of these stories. Mm -hmm. um, so, I think that maybe starting from next week, we could think how we promote uh, uh, tables to leaves if we want to, to facilitate contributions. And uh, yeah, I think that dark theme, etc., they could also be promoted. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's getting, it's getting some adoption. It'd be interesting to see the usage stats when they get published. Um, for June, see how many people have installed it. Yeah. And to check the insights. Is it on tomorrow's webinar, Joe, I did not, I didn't, I made a mistake and didn't invite you and Felix to be presenters on tomorrow's webinar. You are welcome to be there. You're welcome to, to chime in. Uh, it, it's got a piece mm -hmm. that is your system fonts work. So you, you certainly were a contributor to it. My apologies that I forgot to invite the two of you. No apology owed, Mark. No, no, no. I need to go no, catch up on that thread and yeah, um, and see if that works for me. But but yeah, no. Thank you for the reminder. But all good. Yeah. Yep. It would be also yeah. good to announce it in the developer mailing list and uh, other channels. I'm not sure whether you have been worth for that, Mark. But I do, and I, I I will announce it today. There, I just did it in the Gitter channel. I will do it in the developer list as well. Thanks. Yeah. I think I'm also going to do it in the user list. It's worth. It's worth users knowing that these capabilities are coming. They should think about it. Plus one. Okay. So we have got a decent number of registrations. Well, uh, yeah, we can push a bit, but uh, yeah, we definitely will have people joining this session. Mm -hmm. So it's one hundred forty regist uh, registrations now. So Tim, thank you for being willing to present. Oleg, thank you for being willing to present. Much appreciated, both of you. I will look at those slides, hopefully soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you can you can replace them if you need to with something else. I, that's what I, I, I used to talk. I've been on the phone the last six, seven hours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. So, Mark, I just edit uh, all uh, what's next slides. So basically, I consider that it's as a part of presentation now. And, and I put it into the agenda. I, I agree with it. It is part of the presentation. Okay. Great. All right. Thanks. So I think we have on time here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's, let's thank you all for a good session. session. Sorry, okay. go ahead, Felix. No, let's, let's, oh, I think let's, I'm, my closing thought is let's pay attention to uh to the um, two tables to divs um pull request and think about it for the next sig meeting if we don't we don't manage to get it done but we, i'll i'll try to work on it yeah of course yeah one thing uh, i just noticed it uh, today uh, i didn't report it yet uh, it looks like it breaks for two installations uh, when you use Oracle GDK tool installer plugin, and, uh, which requires a license, it looks like uh, there is another regression there. Yeah, I will uh, report it. Yeah. You say that's in table to div, or that's in the uh, in two dot two thirty five. Table to div. Ah, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It it just table to div is so much more attractive. It, it, it is absolutely the way to go.
Thanks. Yeah, the problem is it's also way scarier <laughs> than the Nagadir anything else. Well, uh, remember Jeb 200 times. It was also scary. Uh, yeah. And uh, after two weekly releases, how can we iterate things we are back to perfect? Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> Jeb 200 is, is a good reminder. We can do big things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, JEP 200 is uh, changing uh, all the all serialization of classes over uh, XML or over remoting channels uh, to permit this. Oh. We will look into all it. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Oh, I just realized nobody was taking minutes. I will try to transcribe the minutes tomorrow. Yeah, thanks a lot. Oops. Bye. All right, thanks.